We're live. <laughs> live again. Yeah, we are. Hey, Jerry, how Hello. are you? I'm great. Hey, Double. Double is here. Hello, she about beat us here. How's that? <laughs> yes, Welcome, Double. We are glad you're here. That's awesome. Yes, we are. Um. Oh man! Wow. Just got some news right before it came on. on it was the air. not good. Not good. We was having a great conversation and then just got a bummer. One of our sponsors, Carter Aviation, uh, Chris is a good personal friend of mine. And uh, yesterday they had a devastating house fire, unfortunately. Um, I don't know what kind of help that they need or anything at this point. But if you're a praying person, please send out a prayer to them. At the very least, that's what we can do. I'll be getting with him. Later. See if there's anything I can do personally for him. Uh that sucks. I hate it. Uh, but we have a show to go. So welcome to Newsworthy. <laughs> um, uh, what do you know, Jerry? Not a lot. I do know that uh, thinking about what you just said with Chris Carter and going back to our show from last week, we have so much to be thankful for that we tend to take for granted. You know, we touched on a few of them, things that we clean water. Uh things that we just so rarely think about and give thanks for. Um, I, I've never in my life had a fire of any nature, of any sort, a small one. I'm so thankful for that. That would have to be so horrible. For the pictures that, that he sent you, it looks like they lost everything. Yeah. You know, and we were talking about, you know, feel pretty sure that he has home insurance. And yes, that'll replace a home. It'll replace furniture. Um, th there's so many things that you accumulate over several years that are absolutely irreplaceable. And, uh, yeah, there's no amount of money that's going to replace that. No. Double says that she found some Jerry shoes during Black Friday sales. Well, lucky her. I, I don't think she bought them. I, I, I hope. She's. You told me she was a smart lady. Very, so but we also, know she did. also stylistic, you say. Exactly. She bought them. <laughs> If only I'm sure requested word, you know, information on where they got. <laughs> People will do that. Oh, you think so? We skip the thinking part. Uh, <laughs> let's know what they say. No, they say that there is no doubt. <laughs> Jerry, if people want to reach out and touch us, or no, talk to us. Yeah, we encourage no, no. that <laughs> quite strongly. <laughs> Main reason we wow. don't wear towels. Whew. I was listening to Joan Jett today. Can you? Can you... Joan Jett and the Blackhearts? Oh, yeah. Really? Really? Joan Jett. Okay. Yeah, she's awesome. Saw her in concert back in the early 80s. Really? Of a show in Rep Arena. Open for Kansas, I do believe. Who? Kansas. You don't remember Kansas? The Carrie State? Young, my wayward son? Oh, no, that sucks. Are I, you I, serious? Yeah. They were the main act. Joan Jett was the opening act. Really? Oh, yeah. Why would Joan Kansas Jett was act big. open for anyone? That's she's, she was she's like a musical goddess. I agree. I love the concert. Yeah. Been many years. That's like 30 something years ago I saw her. So if someone would like to reach, reach out. out and talk with oh, us, oh. how can they do that? Well, we'd prefer the touching, but if they can only wish to talk, we, we certainly would love to hear from them. They can uh, email us at newsworthy with Steve and Jerry at gmail.com. They can send us a text at area code 540-709-1318. That's awesome. So we kind of renamed our monthly headlines in fitting for... It's going to happen more than once a month. Yeah. So interesting news of the week. And that's what we're doing today. Pretty stoked by that. Um, what did you do last week? Last week was Thanksgiving. I know you prepared a huge meal for just your daughter and her and, family. And her family. Yep, I did. Enjoyed it and actually am still enjoying it. Still haven't finished the leftovers. Oh, sweet. A lot of food. So much food. Um, you double? guys? Oh, uh, we had a good weekend. Yeah, good week. We started Thursday, Thursday and then it ended Sunday. So Very nice. My, my sister-in-law, my favorite sister-in-law came up and hung out with us with Charlie and and her two girls. Hope that and, doesn't piss off your unfavorite sister-in-laws. 
I don't have an unfavorite sister. Okay. Well, you said this one was your favorite, so I assume there were others. No, just one. Oh, okay. So it she's it favorite by default. Yeah. Well, you didn't make it sound very nice when you had to say that. I guess I screwed that up, right? Yeah. See, I'm trying to promote <laughs> and, and do and, and look at you. You bring me down sorry. to real, real, realville, not cool. Um, I apologize. So uh, we did have a question about. <laughs> Double says, calm down, Jerry. Uh, we had a question come come through last week about donations or letters or Christmas cards or whatever. Um, Christmas cards you can send. Uh, we'll figure out an address and we'll put it on our website uh, for Christmas cards. Donations. Uh, Jerry and I talked at length about this. If, if you know, hopefully very soon we're going to start a Patreon. I don't know the time frame for that. Uh and we'll talk about donations and stuff at that point. But if you want to make a donation or a Christmas gift of any value this year, Jerry and I came up with a couple of, of good charities. Well, we would recommend that you give to a charity. It's that yeah. time of the year. Uh, if you don't have a favorite one, we certainly have a recommendation from each of us. Sure. What was yours, Jerry? Mine was St. Jude's Children's Hospital. And that's a great uh, uh Charity. Uh, I always give to that every time I go on a cruise because they're in partnership with yep. Carnival Cruise Lines. And uh, they do a lot of stuff when it comes to kids and kids' health. And now, are they affiliated with the Shriners and keeping kids? Yes. At, yeah. yes. Strongly. Yeah, Very closely. I well, I don't think they're affiliated. I think the Shriners have picked them as their favorite charity. Gotcha. And the Shriners organizations, the little guys in the little. Sure trains that you see yeah. at fairs and everywhere else. Yeah, th that is usually th the charity that they're raising money for. I know from firsthand experience, my cousin's daughter uh, had to have multiple surgeries when she was a baby, mm -hmm. and Shriners took care of everything, including hotels and food and everything, to make sure that that was as easy as it possibly was. And, and that was awesome. And that young lady now, you would have never known that she, half her life she walked with a, a, a really significant limb. Yep. You know, so kudos to them. The charity I picked is Heifer International. And for those who've never heard of Heifer International, um, what they do is they go to uh, mainly third world countries. Uh, obviously, they're not for, not for profit. Um, and what they do is they give um, local folk in villages who have nothing, they they take them, and, and in a, as an example, if they live in an area that will support chickens, they will give them livestock, they will teach them how to grow, raise, and take care of their livestock, and then that livestock, in, it becomes an economy, eggs, meat, uh, food, they can sell the eggs, they can sell the chickens as they start to reproduce, they teach, they teach them husbandry, and it allows it does a couple of things in my, my opinion. A, it takes the handout out of it. It's more of a hand up. And, and I always think that that's the best way to do something. Sure. If you can, if you can give somebody a skill that's going to feed them and their Absolutely. family, you're doing it right. And Heifer International, you know, both of these groups are well above my 80% threshold, which means they spend over 80% um, actually going to the charity people in need. Uh, they're not, they're not paying. administrative yeah. or spending money to raise more money. Absolutely. So um, both of these are really, really, really good. We appreciate it. And, uh, you know, if you want to give a donation in our name, we'll take it. If you want to do it in your name, hey, the thought's still there. We, we love it. So that's how we want to handle that. Like I say, we'll figure out a, a good address, a PO box or something we'll, we'll come up with and we'll drop it on the, on the website. So by the way, your description of your charity reminded me of the old Chinese adage that I love. Uh, if you give a man a fish, you fed him for a day. Yeah. You teach him to fish, you fed him for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like that's what that Heifer International is trying to do is not to feed these people for a day, a week, a month, but to feed them for a lifetime. Yeah. And, you know, a small flock of chickens can feed the whole family sure. and be an, econo an economic boon. If and, and they have multiple ways of, of doing it for areas that will sustain beef or water buffalo. They, they're not above doing that because then you have milk, meat, and 
yep. um, stuff. So it's one of my favorite charities. I give to them every year. Uh, I hope that you will join me in that. Sounds like a great organization. It is. It is. Uh, so that was that. Um, had, a, had a really good week, Jerry. <laughs> I got to I got to tell a funny story on air, though. You want to hear a funny story? Oh, Absolutely, always. <laughs> so two days ago, I, I go to work really early doing the bus, the part-time bus thing. Sure. And two days ago, I got up, and I always, I always carry this big, huge water bottle with me. It's like a gallon of water. Everybody makes fun of me. Most people say, "Well, you got in there," and I'll be like, "Vodka," you know. <laughs> when I'm driving them down the road, that's really. They're like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> yep. But anyway, I usually have it like there's. It, in, in the vehicle I drive, there's a slot that I can just push it down and it doesn't go anywhere. Well, I forgot to do that. And at 4.15 in the morning, I made a curve and my water bottle went, it slid right across, went down the stairs and went through the glass on the door on my bus. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> through the glass. Through the, you're talking about a lot. When, when you're not expecting a huge glass shatter. Sure, it sounded like a shotgun. Oh, my God. <laughs> it was hilarious. So, yeah, I did that. That was me. Sorry. <laughs> but anyway, so that was that. Hey, I guess what, what I didn't it? forget this week. What is that? Your I, recipe? I didn't forget my recipe this Very week. Very nice. And I've got a recipe for an unusual uh, gourd that most people just throw away after they're done using it. Okay. It's called a kusha. Kushaw. Yeah. Okay. You ever seen one? I actually I have. I bet you have. I have. If you don't know what a kushaw is, but you see a big stack of pumpkins and then they got this big green and white striped gourd beside them, that's kushaw. And how you make that is you cut all the skin off. You chop it into little pieces. Okay. Yeah. You can make it into pie. This isn't actually the pie. So what I'm, what I'm going to teach you is just a dish. Uh, you cut it in little pieces. You boil it until it's fork soft. Fork tender. Fork tender. You take it out. You drain it. Drain it really good. Put it in a bowl. Smash it up like you're going to make mashed potatoes with it. Instead of butter and cream, you add about three tablespoons of vanilla, about four tablespoons of brown sugar, a pinch of nutmeg, a pinch of uh, cinnamon, and then you put all that together with butter. You stir it up good. You put it in a baking dish, more butter. And then here's where the tasting comes in. If you don't like how sweet it is at this point, it's time to put in more brown sugar, more nutmeg, or more cinnamon right. to taste. Butter pats on the top. Throw it in the oven until it's nice and, and, and done. The butter's melted. Pull it out and eat it just like that. For me, it sounds similar to a sweet potato casserole. It's exactly what it's like. Is it? How would you rate the taste compared to that? Personally, I like it better, but it's not something you can eat all the time. It's very, very. The nutmeg makes it very, very. You could scale back on that if you yeah, desire, but it makes it something and, and availability. It's not like you can go and pick. A kusha up in the it's spring. A fall, yeah, it's, it's definitely a fall, a fall dish, and it, it makes me think of Thanksgiving. I've actually had it. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. A couple of times at your house at Thanksgiving. Yeah. Never, we never made that growing up ever. Yeah, and uh, I do enjoy it. It's very good. Oh, uh, I took it to my in-laws' house one year for Thanksgiving, and they <laughs> slayed it. I mean, they, they's like, "What's this?" I'm like, "Just try." And I had two big old dishes of it. Boy, they slayed it. it wasn't a, you couldn't have licked the pan and got another bite. That always makes you feel good. Oh, it does. It does. And, you know, the thing with, I have a great aunt and, or an aunt. I, I'm the only one in the family that typically makes this anymore, mainly because I remembered the recipe and nobody else did. But I have this aunt, and I love her. Sissy, I love you. Um Every single time I've ever made it. Here's her quote. Needs more cinnamon, Stephen. Really? <laughs> Can't have too much I could put 16 her. bottles of cinnamon in it, and I guarantee she's going to have that same statement. Yeah, you should try one time. Yeah. Maybe just take one corner when you know she's coming and tell everyone <laughs> about it. And just dump a whole crap load <laughs> in this one corner. 
if you do, make sure you do not forget which corner. Yeah, no kidding, all right? So one other thing I did this week, Jerry, is what's that? I went, was looking for a new car, so I went and checked out a Tesla. Nice. Man, them I'm things surprised. are expensive. Yes, they are, very much. They charge a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of their claim to fame, isn't it? That is their claim to fame. <laughs> Talking about being so expensive, and it's very true. Th those are nice cars. I like them. Kentucky, this is not the right area for them yet. We don't have the infrastructure, the oh, charging no. stations to support it. Unless you're going to be driving only right around your home. <clears throat> or you can Excuse just me. do what most people do, is strap a generator on the back. <laughs> True. But no matter what, they're expensive. Yeah, absolutely. $50,000. Uh, yeah, I agree. But you're seeing them more and more, by the yeah. way. You really are. Speaking of money, I've got a question for you. Just one of them things that makes you think. One of them things that makes you go, hmm. But if money doesn't grow on trees... Question, why do banks have branches? <laughs> That's a good question. Always wonder. <laughs> and why do they always want to root around in your wallet? I don't get that. They always make me want to leave. <laughs> no. You didn't. And you actually have the nerve to call some of mine bad jokes. <laughs> Those were we're doing two, huh? I got another one for you. That was brilliant. I was a little confused last night. My <laughs> printer started playing music. Really? Yeah. Turns out my paper was just jamming. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> boo. Gosh, I can't. That's double boo. You're so there. upset you didn't have that one yourself. Mm -mm, no, no. In fact, I'm putting it out on the. <laughs> I get you. I, I, I'm doing this. You get booed. <laughs> Where's the audio? I, I need to hear the audio for that. <laughs> oh man! So, anyway, we're going anyway. to this new format. I'm stoked by it. We've got our list. Totally not a new list. format. Not new. New for all the time. Uh, yeah, it's it's. Ah, I'm just excited. Very much so. You know, normally I've always really enjoyed the monthly. Absolutely. Uh, headlines. And we're switching to doing, instead of only having one each and spending 30, 40 minutes on each topic, we're going to switch to covering, uh, who knows, maybe four or five if they're bigger. Maybe eight or ten each if they're yeah. smaller. No, well, I hope so because I've got 15 on my list today. Don't have quite that many, but I have had 15, 16. We never seem to be able to get through half of that list when I do that. So narrowed my list down a little bit. I, I've got several. I, I try to do a mixture of serious news news and a few funny. Well, I'd like to. Me. Can I start today? Absolutely. It's not even on my list, but I want to start with something. Throw it in. So a few weeks ago, we had Clay Davis in. Yep. Big libertarian. Big, big on well, personal. I don't have him back before too long. Absolutely. And now we have a reason to. Um, so Lexington, Kentucky just enacted and, and budgeted for 75 new, and the, the wording of this couldn't be any better, could not be any better. They're called, and I kid you not, somebody said this was a good idea, flock security cams, which are license plate readers, security cams, because they're going to sit back and Anything that you've ever done wrong, they're going to know, and they're going to know where you're at all the time. No, and flock, not true. Yes, very true. Not true. And flock because we're nothing more to them than sheep. <clears throat> That's exactly what it is. It's a stupid $235,000 that they are using to put up security cameras, li excuse me, license plate readers, just to make sure that Johnny Joe over there has car insurance and doesn't have an outstanding warrant. It's Not ridiculous. a single one of those will determine who the driver is, so they don't know if Johnny or anyone else has a warrant. They also don't know if, since they don't know who's driving, they also don't know whether or not you have insurance. Okay. What in all of the glorious is $235,000 worth if it's not doing that? Well, I haven't done research on this lately. I have never done research on it, but I've read a couple of articles. And if I remember correctly, the payback on these systems are pretty short time period. Meaning, <clears throat> since 
they are able to catch every single person. By the way, let me ask you this. You said why you think they're putting the cameras up to catch everything that you've ever done wrong in your life. What is the official reason stated for having these? I don't know. I don't remember. I can't remember the article. Let me find it, though. It's to catch people running red lights. It's to make the streets safer. It's these systems will catch and automatically mail out. Trust me, I know when I lived in Washington or in the suburb of Washington, D.C., when I lived in Fredericksburg, several close places around, including Washington, D.C., had these systems everywhere. I've received two of these tickets in the mail. What they do is they determine if you're in the intersection when the light turns red. They take a picture of your license plate as you're leaving and they will mail you a ticket. Now, you can get out of it if you weren't driving, but you have to prove who was driving and bring them with you to court. And they will be they will be more than happy to say, we accept that and we'll take the ticket away from you and we'll give it to the person you just proved did it. But somebody's going to pay for this. And the, so the it's revenue works. generation, Not just like that. everything else in the legal system, more revenue generation, Church revenue generation. Beautiful. So to answer your question, Ugh. the money gets repaid pretty quickly. Does it make the street safer? Probably. It's going to have people. You're going to be more hesitant to run a red light if you know there's umpteen cameras recording just that. Do you not think? Now, follow me for a I second. I don't like this. I don't like the fact that it's there. I'm just telling you from the other side of the story. Well, the other side of the story is BS. It is a no, start. It's not BS. It is a start to what China had four years ago. I'm just saying. Which is what? A total surveillance state. Well, they have that now. Why did no, you no. say four years ago? That's when it started, okay. when they was in earnest. They have it to a point that in China, if they hear you talk about Xi Jinping in a negative connotation, they don't send you a ticket. They don't send a, uh, an officer to see you. They simply deduct that from your bank account as a fine. Well, you've heard about what's going on in this past week, right? Yeah, the digital currency. I'm talking about in China. Oh. The, the millions that are protesting in China. Oh, but did you hear what them, happened last night? Several of them calling for him his resignation. Yeah. Did you hear what happened last night? I bet you didn't, unless you followed Tucker Carlson, whom I'm not a huge fan of Tucker, but he didn't miss this one, and all of our irregular media did. Okay. What? Xi Jinping sent in tanks. He's squashing it as of last night. Well, that's this is China. I understand that. But when you're but, saying he's sending in tanks, this is happening across the country. The last I heard, 15, 20 different cities. It's not like it's one city. It's happening in, in a pretty and, large area. And he will crush all of that. Probably. But I'm just what, curious. They're not going to turn this into another tenement square. You don't think? Oh, no. That, that, Steve, that still haunts them. They yeah. still look at that as a huge. That's what you don't do. Because that is what will incite people to turn against you for the next 20, 30, 40 years. Anyway, that doesn't help them. What I'm saying is, back to the whole beginning of our security state, you and I disagree. Me and Clay actually completely agree on this. And, and you were correct when you say when we're in public, we don't have an expectation of privacy. Shouldn't have an expectation. I agree with that. However, there is a difference between having no expectation of privacy okay. and having a bunch of cameras do police officer jobs. Why do you think it's a police officer's job? You just simply said. Uh, that they don't need a police officer to do it anymore. I never said that it was strictly the job of a police officer. Technology so, can do that job far better, far cheaper than police officers. So why not utilize that? Well, I, 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 just, for the, I, I just have a general distrust, of, distrust the of what they're doing with that information. I agree with that. I agree with that. And that's Clay's there's underlying no, reason. There's no accountability. There's no transparency. I agree with that. And that has to change. I agree. If they would stick to the listed reasons for having it, if they would stick to and be honest and transparent about who they share this information with and we knew and how long they were going to keep it, it'd be a different story. I agree with Clay totally that this stuff is being misused all the time. Absolutely. That's where the crime comes in. Not that the fact that there's a camera on a, a red light at the corner of Rose and Euclid that's trying to stop people from running a red light. I don't have a problem with that. I have a problem with the fact that it gets uploaded to a database in Colorado 
and it's kept on file for the next 20 years of every person who happened to be going through that intersection and at what time. Those are called, and, and they can pull that in for, if there's a crime that happens there, they can pull that. That's called geo geofencing and geofencing warrants. They can, the FBI can now write a warrant on a geofence. If you're in the squared area, they can write a warrant for you to so. be brought. No, it is. Well, first Not of legally, all, first but of all, they do it. First of all, the fact that your vehicle licensed to you is at a certain place does not mean you were there. Uh, who, who did they send the warrant to? You, your your wife, your 18-year-old son? Same deal. You just now said that in, in Washington, you got a ticket, and the only way you could get out of the a ticket A warrant is a little is, bit different from a ticket. I understand. That's what makes this unconstitutional. And the rest of warrant doesn't change the fact that the FBI is using it currently. No, I don't think so. Mm. Well, I'll Google that. Let's let's go back to a I'll different. Google that. You Google that after the show. And next week, you guys are welcome to tune in and hear his apology and his retraction. Redaction. Redaction. I'm not retracting yeah. anything because <laughs> I think the government's sour. What's, right. what's your first topic? Another sad one. Um, I'm sure most people have heard John Y. Brown passed away this past week, 88 years old. I asked Steve earlier if he remembered him, and he said that he was a little bit before his time, and it's true. He was a governor from 1979 to 1983, the year that I graduated from high school, and Steve is 10 years younger than I was, so he was graduating second grade. But uh, he, he was a pretty popular governor. He was um, widely credited with bringing about quite a bit of change in the governor's office in the state of Kentucky. Up to that point, the governor had the right to appoint chairmanship of committees uh, and was really involved in a lot of ways in the legislative branch. When he come along, he said, you know what, guys, I, I'm running the executive branch. I'm going to let you guys run your legislative branch. And to this day, many people are still very appreciative of that. Of course, he was also known for being the person that took KFC from being a relatively small regional chain into the multinational powerhouse that it is today. Um, yeah, it was sad to see John Mott Brown pass away. Yeah. Then the D cell to the Yum Center? I think so. Is, uh, or not Yum Center, but Yum Brands. To Pepsi? Yeah, PepsiCo. Uh, I think so, yes. I think yeah. he sold directly to them, if I remember correctly. 88-year-old former governor. Wow. Well, that sucks. Yeah, then it was her. Now, his uh, double brings up Martha. I remember Martha. That was kind of where I was starting to understand. Martha Lane Collins. Sure. Remember you Martha. You said she brought her up in what regards? Oh, just that, that it was after after he was, when he left. Uh, was when she Martha came, came in. in. So, Yeah. So I've never been more surprised at something that a celebrity did, and I shouldn't be, I guess. But you do you remember when she was caught several years after she was governor? She was caught shoplifting from some store socks. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> she came out and admitted she was a kleptomaniac. She didn't wow. need it, she didn't want it. It was just she said it was almost like she was just a thrill. The thrill. Jeez. You Clint know, Dominic had been most of her life. Listen, <laughs> speaking of that, I got, I got a story to tell. I got to Google, make sure I didn't misquote this to someone else. Please go ahead. So when I worked at Kmart in, in Burlington, okay. uh, Kentucky, which is Northern Kentucky, greater Cincinnati area. Uh, we had our loss prevention officer was off the chains. Good. Off the chains. Good. We had to stop this guy who had left, and he was stealing a, a, a Kmart-level driver golf club, right? Had stuffed it down his pants, was walking out with a limp. We get out to We follow him out to his car. My guy is getting into a Porsche 911 Carrera, oh a $78,000 car. This was 20 years ago, right? And it turns out the guy's like just begging, sobbing, crying. I just wanted to see blah, blah, blah. You know what he did for a living? No idea. He was the lead surgeon at one of the local, no. one of the lead 
neurosurgeons at one of the local hospitals there in the greater Cincinnati area. I'm not mentioning any same names. type deal. Yeah, Klepto. just trying to get trying, trying to get a feel for it. Absolutely crazy. Another thing that happened while I worked at that store, um, we had a sting operation in our bathroom. Our bathroom at that location had become a meeting place for people who enjoyed the same sex company. Okay. In a public setting. All right, then. In one day, Jerry, they pulled out 20 people. No. Oh. Arrested 20 people one Saturday oh out of our restroom. And the one that sticks out to me the most, the one that sticks out to me the most, he was sitting back there. He's a you little. I want to use a different analogy. Stick <laughs> the one I remember the most correctly. The one I remember the most was the owner of five different hotels oh my in the local area. And the cop even asked him, he's like, dude, you own hotels. You don't have a room for this stuff? <laughs> Charged them all with lewd and, and decent whatever. Behavior. Yeah. Crazy. Well, hey, Raccoon. Glad I to do see you, wish buddy. to retract that about Governor Collins. Oh, I good. Google it, and I have found nothing. I have no idea who the hell I'm thinking of, <laughs> but apparently it's not Martha Lane Collins. My sincere apology. Yeah. Been a long time since I read that. Jerry, do you like hot dogs? Well, I had one for dinner tonight. Yeah. Sonic, first time in 10 years, and <laughs> foot-long Coney Dog. So would you eat, say, 50 hot dogs yeah. in like two minutes? Do they have another one of those contests? What? The, the hot world eating, eating contest? World Nathan's Hot Dogs World yeah. Eating Contest? No. However, legendary competitive eater Pat Philbin, who is one of the um, – originators of that. One of the first contestants, yep. uh, he passed away. Just throwing it out there. 59 years old. Um, don't know the cause, but... Uh, Probably exploded stomach. <laughs> I don't know. I don't... How does one go about being a competitive eater? I well, couldn't even finish lunch today. blows me away? It's never some huge guy that you look at and think, no. oh, he's going to win. It's always this guy that's about five foot seven or eight, and he weighs about 125 pounds soaking wet. And you think, there's no way that guy could hold more than three or four, period. Yeah, on a good day. On a good day. Yeah. And the guy's eating like 61 and 118 seconds. Are you kidding me? I don't, I don't get I don't, it. Yeah. I mean, I also don't even have, I'm sure there's good money involved in it at some point. But what makes you want to, Try to get good at that. Here's where I couldn't get past. So the good hot dog eaters will always, because you have to eat the bun and the dog. Right. They will dip it all in water and then eat it. Because I guess because it, goes otherwise it gets too dry that it won't yeah, go down the throat. That's disgusting. That's soggy bread. I, I'm out. <laughs> I can't even eat one if it's got soggy bread. It's why I don't eat ketchup or mustard or anything on my hot dogs. I don't want the soggy bread. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Double said lube. <laughs> My kind of woman out there. Yes, indeed. Oh, man. And some of those contests, they just they blow me away. What's your next topic, Jerry? <laughs> For the Steve Jobs fans, you may have heard this. A pair of his sandals from the 1970s were recently auctioned off. Care to guess what they might have sold for? Right. It's Steve Jobs. Okay, it's Steve friggin' Jobs. So, not cheap. If it was cheap, I wouldn't. It wouldn't be on my thing. What would you guess? A pair of sandals from the '70s. Used sandals that he wore. They think it's a pair of Birkenstocks from the mid '70s. Oh, I like Birkenstocks. Yeah. Pretty well wore out. I can show you pictures. <laughs> they pretty I mean, well. You can always put a new sole on those. That's why they were so big. And the you wear straps are frayed. It's yeah. a well, well worn uh, pair. 300 bucks. $218,000. <laughs> the California house where Steve Jobs co founded Apple is a historical site. And now the sandals that he wore while pacing its floors have been sold for $218,000. The well-used brown suede Birkenstocks that dated to the mid-70s set a world record for the highest price ever paid for a pair of sandals, used or new, according to Julian's Auctions, 
who conducted the sale. $218,000. Hey, listen, as my wonderfully amazing little niece said today, or said Saturday when I was getting, I have a, old, a, a box of old toys in my closet that they always get when they come in, but it's in my closet. Right. So we go back in there to get my the toys out of my closet, and she says, Uncle Steve. I'm like, what, baby? She goes, why you got more shoes than my mama? <laughs> she wasn't lying or exaggerating. <laughs> no, she wasn't. And sadly, the, the, there was no examples of the best shoe ever made in that collection, was there? Not well. Yes. No. No. I no. got a beautiful pair. I never got, saw you wear them. I've got at least six pair of Crocs in there. Exactly. So none of the best pair of shoes. <laughs> there were no New Balance in the exactly. in the collection. Oh, I got four or five New Balance. Just, just not those ugly white ones that you yeah. wear. Like I said. Speaking of, I got a brand new pair of shoes today. Really? Woo! Go yeah. It was a Black Friday sale. I couldn't pass it up. A pair of Asics gel. Retails at one ninety eight. One ninety eight. A two hundred dollar pair of shoes. I scooped up for fifty two dollars. Woo! I'll have to see them, but I'm guessing if it's like a lot of yours, you'd probably have to pay me fifty two to be seen wearing them. <laughs> <laughs> Just say. Oh, who's What's talking? Your next one. Oh, it's my turn. I just covered the sandals. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, let's do this one. Uh, it, I, I hesitate because I'm going through my paper lists, okay. just so you know. Um, so I got a couple and they're kind of linked. You care if I throw them together? Not a bit. Okay. So last week, South Korea's president, stern warning to North Korea. If you test your seventh nuclear weapon, we are going to escalate to points you've never seen before. I understand their point. You know, their capital is less than 50 miles from the DMZ. Doesn't take a whole lot to get a missile 50 miles to wipe out a capital. So I kind of understand why he's got to be hardcore. But it goes back to the thing we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Like this whole world just feels like it wants a fight with nobody. We have a bunch of politicians in this world that feel like they want to fight. It's not, not going to be them huge. doing the fight. In this particular example, is it North Korea and the fact that they're testing nuclear weapon after nuclear weapon? Or is it that the South Korea has finally said, you need to stop this? Which one is it you think is pushing for the fight? Both. Okay. Absolutely both. Not only that, the second topic I was going to bring up today was that, and, and me and you had talked about it, um, China and Russia together sent over six bombers into South Korea's airspace today, or this week. Air defense. Zone. Their air defense network zone. Um, first, it was just a couple of Chinese jets, and then the next time it came, it went through, and then it came back through, and it had some Russian jets tagging along with it. Which meant that it certainly appeared to be... They were doing joint training. Yes. and Which is scary in itself. Yeah. China and Russia doing joint military training. And obviously, they had clearance for North Korea to be flying in that area, who they would deem an ally. Right. It, it's just, it feels, and, and I was not alive, unlike, you know, probably you were. Um, oh, was <laughs> Around World Cuban War Missile Two, or, I he's going to say Cuban Missile Crisis, or World War One, when the world, it just seems like, with all the rhetoric that these politicians are throwing out there, and the way it's being reported, I think has a lot to do with it as well. That our world is just itching for a fight. The political leaders of our world is itching for a fight. It's I, I just it saddens me. It angers me. It just. Uh, uh. Question for you. What do you sure. think would have been an appropriate response for South Korea to make? Okay. As far as the, the, the planes invading their airspace, appropriate response, in my opinion, hey, leave now. Turn now or we're going to shoot at you. And scramble some jets, which is what they what did. They did. Right. And if you don't turn now, we cannot guarantee those pilots safety. You have to draw a line somewhere. You it's absolutely not be your territory. If you're not going to keep your sovereign territory sovereign, then you, you, had, you where do you draw the line? So absolutely one warning and then shoot the shit out of them. Pardon my friend. The other case? 
you've dealt with this nutball for 40 years or some member of his family at this point. You guys have got to figure it out. It's like two kids. But once again, I, I agree. Fighting I over a toy in the sandbox. Two little boys having a pissing contest. Yes, and the only people getting wet are the people underneath. But, uh, hey, Mochi, glad you're here. Hello, Mochi. Yeah, I can't disagree with any of that. Really can't. Turkey is, uh, Mochi asked if we've discussed Turkey and Syria, and I haven't today. Turkey's actually on my list uh, to discuss about something totally different. But uh, it's your turn, not mine. On a little bit lighter note, but still bad news. Uh, There's a temple in Thailand, and I couldn't pronounce it, so don't ask me to say it. But unfortunately, there is a temple in Thailand who no longer has any monks. Oh, no. Yeah, the, the, the police and welfare department showed up. Something obviously had happened to cause them to have suspicions. They showed up and drug tested. Very small monk, or uh, heavy, by the way. They showed up and drug tested all four monks. All four of them failed. All four. Very small. Very small, heavy. Small town. They don't don't need a huge monastery. Small town. Four monks. Four monks. All four failed the drug test. (laughs) It sounds like a really bad... Not Not an alcohol test. A drug test. That sounds like a really bad... Opening line to a joke. <laughs> Doesn't it though? Four, four monks <laughs> walk into a bar and fail a drug test. They were all forced to leave the, the monkhood after urine tests showed evidence of illegal drugs, according to the Bangkok Post. I know this sounds crazy, made up. It's to the point that I decided I needed to leave a link proving that I didn't make this crap up, and it will be on the website later when the article goes up. Yeah. Four monks at an abbey in Thailand, and they all failed a drug test. Just wow. so you know. Wow. That's crazy. So, I just want to go on the record. I've said this probably, not on our show before, but in our conversations before, okay. um, about certain candidates. Okay. And why did we put this candidate up, or who is this candidate? Most candidates, I think, we've asked that question about. Yeah, in a lot of cases. In this case, I've said it. I have said this. Why does Herschel Walker a candidate in a swing state battle? Today was further evidence as to why that shouldn't happen. I didn't hear this. Did you hear the speech? I did not. (laughs) Now, this is a man who is campaigning in a runoff. Against Gary or uh, Warnock. Warnock, who is one of the most liberal senators we have. Quite liberal. Very liberal. Today in a speech, or yesterday in a speech, I don't remember the day of the speech, yesterday or today, this man, Herschel Walker, this man says, well, Texas is always top in my mind. And he's being accused. He's already under fire for being accused for being a carpetbagger, which I had to look up the term, so don't feel bad if you don't know what that is. That's an old term that says, if if you don't think you can win where you live, you move somewhere else where you think you can win. Okay. Exactly what I thought it meant. Yeah. So... Okay, go ahead. So that's what he's been accused of in the past, and now here he is in a speech during a runoff that is... Very important to the future of our country, I believe. Um, not that important. Well, they're not going to win. I mean, it's not like they've already lost the Senate. But yes. another it's vote. not going to control the. Right. Which party controls Senate? Well, I think it's important in the fact that even if they, even if they don't difficult. win the Senate, it may Warnock go away, who's very liberal. So, you know what I'm saying? I do. And this is the guy we run? Who can't even figure out which state he lives in? <laughs> or which state he should be highly... Jeez, O.P. Just... Yeah, I totally agree. Just absolutely. Raccoon's back. Woo-hoo! You know, unfortunately, you asked the question, why did we run this guy? Uh, I'm going to be real honest here. Uh, 
especially after Warnock. I think they realized that what they were going to need to do was to win the Atlanta vote. They figured that a strong black American was probably their best route to do that. I get you. Absolutely. I think they went looking for a good, well-recognized, conservative, well-known black American, and they come up with Herschel Walker. It goes back to what you and I said so many times. You need to quit looking at color, and you need to get away from policies that take that into consideration and go with the best candidate. Period. Absolutely. I think Georgia would have been far better off if Gosh. they had just went and got the best candidate instead of looking at Herschel Walker, who is an absolutely phenomenal athlete and has zero experience in politics ever. Okay. And they, were going, they were, I think, going based upon name recognition. What else does the guy have? Nothing. He's a great athlete. That does not qualify you to be a good politician. Uh, Absolutely. I, in my humble opinion, that was the mistake they made. It was crazy. Crazy. What's your next topic there, Mr. Jerry? One that's a little bit controversial. Oh, yeah. I like those. Do you? Okay. Yeah. You like this one? Thanks to Elon Musk, Twitter announced on November the 23rd that they have stopped enforcing their COVID-19 misinformation policy. Going back to the very beginning of COVID, basically, in January 2020, Twitter began trying to do what it could to address the COVID-19 misinformation on its platform. In that time period, they had pulled over 97,000 tweets with false content. What this? What to do? Okay. They had pulled over 97,000 tweets with false content. They had challenged another 11.7 million accounts with warning labels. They had banned over 11,000 accounts for repeatedly posting misinformation regarding COVID-19. So, what does this mean? Well, it's good news for those out there that like to try to convince others that the vaccine contains a microchip through which the government is going to track everything you do and everywhere you go. For those that like to try to prove that the vaccine will change your DNA. For those that are trying to prove that the vaccine will actually give you COVID. For those that tried to claim that it will cause infertility. You had one grandchild born during COVID, correct? Or was it more than one? I had two myself. Uh, yeah, just one, I think. I actually, when I read that, it got me to think. I, I'll go back to some others, but the infertility, I heard that a lot. It's going to cause infertility. But anyway, we're back. I apologize. And as we were saying, I actually looked it up. Since one of the hey, things Bucci. that they were claiming, hey, double. claiming was that the vaccine would make you infertile. I mentioned that I'd had that. A couple of grandchildren born. You had how many born during the pandemic? I think one. Believe it or not, the birth rate actually went up in 2021 for the first time in seven years. Now, when you stop and think about it, that, that shouldn't be a surprise, right? We shut the world down. There were, everyone was stuck at home with nothing else to do. Why wouldn't the birth rate go up? Right. right. The obvious fact becomes, obviously, the vaccine did not cause infertility. Um, but uh, that's one of the big things that, that people have been saying, one of the many things that they say, the tracking chips, the infertility. So many claims were made, it's going to give you COVID. It's going to cause COVID. They claimed that the birth rate, uh, th they claimed that the death rate was being exaggerated. They claimed that the death from vaccines were being hidden. Unfortunately, if you believe that, you believe that every country in the world went into cahoots and decided to fake all this information. This is not just the United States. This was a worldwide plague. No, I get that. And I understand where you're coming from. But there are some serious side effects that are starting to, to, to be. Really? Like what? Starting to be come evident from the vaccine. I, I mean, that they haven't linked them officially yet, but mito, 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 mitochondria. Think uh, the the mitochondriac infarction. Is that if right? I'm not mistaken, that's less than one hundredth of one percent of the I people get that. have taken it. I understand that, but when when you have politicians saying there's no risk, and then there's a risk. Really? Of what politician said that? Oh, take your pick. No, no. Tell me what politicians said that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure as far as major. Okay. 
on a national level? I'm pretty sure it's zero. Oh, but yeah, but correct right. me on who I'm, on how I'm wrong. No, I'm not. I'm just saying that there are still a and people have a, a right to be concerned. I, I'm, you, regardless, anything you put in Absolutely. your body. They have a right to be concerned. What they don't have a right to do is to go lie. What they don't have a right to do is to tell the public that it causes infertility. They don't have a right to say that there's a microchip that will allow the government to track you. They don't have a right to say that the government is hiding and covering up the, on the deaths same caused token, by the though, vaccine. On the same token, you shouldn't have the right to go back and say, to change definitions as to what a vaccine actually is. What a vaccine is? Yeah. Who changed their definition of what a vaccine is? Uh, Webster's Dictionary changed it because um, the the whole thing with all these booster shots that you have to get every three their months. The definition of a vaccine or what fully vaccinated means? Maybe it was that. I don't think anyone that I've heard of changed their definition of a vaccine. Could be wrong. Please correct me if I am. I will. I always do. But this has got nothing to do with people who intentionally, knowingly lied. No, I agree. Trying to Those get people, people to not take the vaccine. People who knowingly lie. I mean, I believe, first of all, let's just put it out there. I think everybody has a right to choose if they want to get this vaccine or not. And if what I'm against is when you start saying, oh, you have to have a passport with your vaccination status to, to come to to go on a cruise, to go into a restaurant. In some of the big liberal cities, you have to have that to go in and eat. Well, first of all, in the most conservative city in America, if you so desired and you were the owner of a restaurant and you wanted to require face mask or proof of vaccination, you had the right to do that. Yep. Now, some cities, and I think you would agree that the owner of that restaurant had the right to do that. Yep. Would you not? It's his restaurant. It's his restaurant. Totally agree. What you're talking about, and, and I agree. To some extent, some cities went crazy with it, especially in restaurants, because we know that if you're in a restaurant, you can't wear a face mask. You can't eat with a face mask on. So if uh, what sense did it make to say you can come in my restaurant? You have to have a mask on until you come and sit down at the table. And maybe you marked off and were only allowing them to sit at every other table, which meant instead of a foot away, they're three or four feet away but they're in an inside closed environment. And you once they're seated, they're allowed to take their mask off. They're all breathing the same air. It's not being recirculated every you know, 10, 15 seconds. Obviously, the air that the, the neighboring table breathed, you're going to get some of that. So it didn't make a lot of sense. I agree in restaurants. Uh, totally different from what we're we're talking about we're so, talking about Twitter trying to battle misinformation, and why did they stop it? So, this I was wrong on who I said the Webster's Dictionary changed it. I was wrong. Uh, Mer actually, yeah, Merriam-Webster is the definition holder, I guess. Um, but the CDC is actually the ones who changed the definition of a what vaccine? a vaccine is. Yes, a spokesperson. A spokesperson. This is according to News West Nine. A spokesperson for the CDC said that the previous definition could be interpreted to mean that vaccines are 100% effective. This has never been the case for any vaccine. So they clarified. They didn't change the definition. They clarified. No one has ever said vaccines are 100% effective. The spokesperson for the CDC said the previous definition could have been <laughs> misconstrued. Yes, but they changed the definition to make it clear. I, it doesn't say to make clear. Yes, it, it says does. Read on. It does say To that. make it more transparent. Oh, okay. Transparent. It's not being clear. Not at all. Right. I stand corrected. You should. Transparent Thank and clear. You. Nothing to do with each other. I think it's fair. I, I, I agree. That's very fair. Uh, you know, and back to the restaurant owner. If you don't want to eat there and you don't want to wear a mask, which I wouldn't. I wouldn't go to a restaurant today that made me wear a mask. Not <laughs> happening. Done. Yeah, what if they initiated another mask uh, masking what lockdown? I'm not doing it. I'm out. I've had COVID. It sucked. I got through it with your help. Thank you. <laughs> um, but I don't like, and I don't, I, I just, what was the topic going with this anyway? I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, I started to say, what did you, oh, the, the Twitter. You're not Twitter. addressing this at all. My question is, why would. Is it Twitter's job to do that though? Isn't it everyone's job to. Do their own research? Isn't it everyone's job to call out misinformation when we know that it will 
what's being said, if left alone, is very harmful to public health. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, maybe. Here, here's where I, here's maybe. my argument to that, Jerry. If you go to Facebook right now and you make a post having anything related to God, guess what they do? They cover it up. Anything Sensitive information. To God? Yeah. Any quote. If your quote says something about God, Jesus, any of that, they cover it up and you have to click a button to look at it. For anyone. Yeah. My aunt. Again, I, I didn't know I, that because I don't I use lo- Facebook. I love my aunt. Now, she makes these ask- posts all the time and they're all covered up and you have to click a button to make them uncovered. Let me ask this. Due to How does that hurt public health? Huh? How does that kill people? It doesn't. But what misinformation my, my about is, COVID kills. If it gets people to not Steve, do you remember the email that you sent out to all your friends when you had COVID? Yeah. I, yeah. I do. What did you recommend that everyone do if they had not yet done? Get vaccinated. Why? Because that sucked. Because you were at the point, I, if I'm not mistaken, that you said you and your wife, if things didn't change shortly, we were going to the hospital. have to go to the hospital. Yeah. There were times you told me that you knew you needed to go, but was afraid of being put on a ventilator because you saw the statistics of how few people come off. That's where you were. And you were recommending that people get vaccinated. Made my mom go we're get vaccinated. We're talking about people who intentionally, knowingly lied, trying to get people to not yeah, get vaccinated. I don't vaccinated. think you should lie. And I'm not recommending that people... And I'm not, I agree with... There was hesitancy from a lot of people about the vaccine. Rightfully so. If you want to say, you know what, I think it needs more testing. you got a right to say that. Yep. You don't have a right to come out and lie and say it causes infertility when you have... No proof. No proof. Okay, I got you. All of these things we're talking about are not Debatable. They, they reflect lies. That's the problem that I have with this when people knowingly lie and in doing so will damage and possibly kill people. Okay. That should be prevented. How about we switch to a less topic? Debatable. <laughs> Not a less topic, less debatable. Let, no, no. It, it's just so, less. Just less. Just less. <laughs> Let's switch from COVID, which we to completely. For the most part, disagree no, we on. Don't. Yeah, we do. I agree exactly with the way you felt when you sent the email out. So you can't see that we totally disagree. What about the CIA agent who recently passed? But- smart guy. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm getting ahead of you. Is he a smart guy? Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe not that Ooh. smart, or he would have said it earlier. But maybe at least he finally said it. Uh, my guy on his deathbed. Uh, calls up, and I'm pulling up the article now. Uh, if anyone ever watched, uh, ever watches or watches Ancient Aliens, then they know the name Richard Dolan. He is a documentary maker, uh, UFO researcher, and by all of, on this topic, we often say Clay, when it comes to surveillance, is one of the smartest guys we know. Richard Dolan on this topic top experts. is one of the top experts. So he calls up Richard Dolan, and he goes up there and basically says, um, you know, I'm not going to live. I lived through the 60s, the 50s, and the 60s. I'm out, and I need this to be known. Saying that, uh, and he just, real in a nutshell, Roswell did happen. The, the pieces of the plane went from Roswell to San Antonio to uh, – Right, Pat in Ohio, which was kind of the known thing, is what happened with that, due to, to where this the 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 product would have flown at that particular time, um, and then eventually it was taken to Area Fifty One, um, and I know that name gets a lot of oohs and ahs. It's a real place, very much, and so. it's very much really secret. And if you fly over it, you will really get shot down. And if you try to sneak in, you will get shot. You will get shot. (laughs) They'll ask you one time to leave. And if you don't. Two or three years ago, wasn't there like a planned day? I remember your son talking about he would like to have been out there when people planned on trying to sneak in. And the general who runs the base pretty much said, if you guys do this, we're going to have a really bad story the next day when we shoot every single one of you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Don't do this. Did it not happen at all? It did not happen. Good. It ended up being like a few hundred guys showed up, and no one, surprisingly, took the run. <laughs> they all got to the edge where the big signs are. It says, you know, if you go trespass this point, you're taking your life into your own hands, Good. basically. Nobody they tried. They weren't that. quite as dumb as we thought they were. Yes. So, 
regardless of the stigma that the name has, it's a very real research thing. And if they're not researching aliens, they are research. That's where the B-2 bomber, the stealth bomber, was created. And, and that's where the 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 U.S., uh, the Blackbird was created. They really do research there on really high-end stuff, and you're not going to get in there. Yep. Uh, most people think that Groom Lake is the actual final test spot, and most of the stuff is handled closer to the mountains. But we won't get into all that. Anyway, this guy said that he actually worked with live extraterrestrials and helping to figure out and fix, here's the kicker, other extraterr- extraterrestrial ships that had crashed. Not even his kind. Others that had crashed. So he's saying that it, on his deathbed, there was at least multiple types of aliens hmm. already here on Earth. You laugh. You think that's funny. But No, I just... Yeah. I don't know what else to do. Well, it's scary. And, and, you know, and you, Very. Were, you, I you started wonder, Before you said that, the first thing I thought was, what do you expect me to do, shit my pants? <laughs> yes, it's scary. I choose to laugh. Well, it, it kind of makes sense when you start thinking about pre-Roswell, the direction of our tech, sure. the world technology, after post-Roswell, how fast America started doing this, climbing technologically. Leaps and bounds, unrealistic. If if you believe in the theory of evolution, unrealistic evolutionary jumps in intelligence and and what we're able to do. There there is link and lineage there. So that was my topic. A right, good one. I've got a really political one next. Not Democrat Republican political, but. I'm sure you heard about the possible railroad strike. I actually on my list. Um, and I've got an update to it because a lot changed in around four o'clock this afternoon. But earlier today, Biden told Congress that he, they needed to take action uh, to try to prevent the railroad strike. And he asked them to step in. And the lawmakers were considering a bill that would impose a compromise labor agreement that was brokered by the Biden administration. And again, impose. Keyword here, impose. They were the piece of legislation they were considering earlier was going to impose a labor agreement that had already been voted down by four of the 12 unions. So they come up with this compromise solution. They thought they said, here, what do you think? Four of the 12 labor unions voted it down. They're talking about passing a bill that says you don't have a choice. We're going you don't have a choice to the employees or to the companies. We're going to force you. I have a question. How is this legal? This isn't Russia. This isn't China. Since when does the government have the right to tell companies what kind of labor agreement they must have? Since when does the government have the right to come in and tell a group of workers, you will work for this amount of money and you will work for these benefits and we don't really give a crap if you like it or not. Oh, oh, what law gives the government this right? I've never heard of this. Maybe I'm just a stupid... Well, it's not without precedence. Let me finish. Okay. At 4 o'clock this afternoon, it lo- no longer was proposed. It was passed in the United States House and has been sent to the United States Senate for approval. Go ahead. Do you think it'll pass in the Senate? I, to me, it's freaking illegal. And if it challenged, the Supreme Court should overturn it. You said it's not unprecedented? It's not unprecedented. Back what? during World War II, the United States government nationalized, or World War I, nationalized the railroad system. I understand how that's that, legal during wartime. Yeah. There's a lot of things where the government has the uh, It comes ability. back to the same thing we talk all the time. If you give the government an inch, they take a mile. <laughs> they're going to take yes. a mile. But have you ever heard of this no. outside of wartime? No. Again, there there are huge powers given to the government. They, they can and have taken over automotive companies, huge companies, and said, you're going to make tanks. You're going to make this. Yeah. Uh, that's wartime. Th- this isn't war. This is simply saying it'll be an inconvenience. It'll hurt our economy. It'll cause inflation. Uh, inconvenience is a very big understatement. I don't care. Yeah. Do you remember when the uh, air traffic controllers went on strike yep. when Ronald Reagan was president? Yep. What did he do? Did he impose a government-mandated nope. agreement? He fired all of them. Fired everyone. <laughs> fired everyone and replaced them with who? Uh, Military air traffic yeah. controllers. Just to get the planes in the air. 
Yeah. And then they could come back hat in hand and get their job back. Yep. Um, I just don't see how it's legal. To me, it shouldn't be legal. I agree that you're right. This is a big deal. It would have caused huge disruptions. Over $2 billion. Isn't that capitalism? Yeah. No, isn't that the way capitalism works? I agree. Um, this is actually, all right, uh, disagreement alert. Of the bill that imposed this, right? they, on the first bill, they only gave them one paid time off, one day off. And uh, what's his name? Required seven. Yeah. Bernie Sanders said he was going to oppose it unless we guaranteed seven paid sick days, which did they not already have seven paid sick days? Apparently what not. Company, some of them. Have you? When's the last time you worked for a company that didn't give you seven sick days per year? Oh, I I wouldn't work for a company that. Didn't so I was that. surprised to hear that they were asking for something that, in my opinion, was that low. Maybe I've just been fortunate and worked for companies that had pretty good benefits, but I was really surprised when I heard that uh, Bernie Sanders was saying that he would not support the bill unless that they agreed to add seven paid sick days as a requirement to the bill. But, oh, absolutely. Uh, and by the way, there were several other progressives that come out and said, we're just not going to agree to this period, mainly because the democratic party has long been big supporters of labor unions. And they thought, and rightfully so, I think they, they were taking the power away, not only from the unions, but from the companies, they went to both sides and said, you're going to agree to this. You don't have a choice. Well, I think there's a couple of parts in here that, that were overlooked. First of all, the, the 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 unions and the companies have until December 9th to get this worked out. True. Um, and hopefully, for their sake, they do. Right. I think that this was a ploy by our government from Biden's down. And if it is, not that I would agree that the government should be able to come in and tell your company what you're going to do, but I agree that it's they're doing what they feel they have to do to stop that before December 9th. Um, and when I say two billion, I don't mean two billion a, a week or two it. billion a month. That's two billion dollars a day. I get it. That's a huge detriment. Now, once again, that, that's not the system that we're this I country agree. is built and founded on. You and I are not going to argue about that. You know, I'm a big capitalist supporter. Just, go on, um, here, I guess, is my point. If you think that traffic lights. In Lexington, Kentucky, is go government overreach? What in the hell is this? Right. What the this hell? This is our yeah. What the hell? <laughs> this is our government saying to an entire industry, "We don't give a crap it, what either one of you want. Here's what you will do." Also, in the seventies and eighties, the United States government did another sort of an automotive bailout, and when they formed Conrail, because the rail industry that came to a screeching halt. You know, no money, broke bad infrastructure. The government came in and bailed them out then. And I think that somewhere in that documentation is where they're getting the, and I'm using air quotes, folks, the legal rights to be able to step in on that. If if that's true and the people agreed to it back then. Well, see, first of all, the companies could agree to it and they could sign away their rights. How could employees sign away their rights and the right to all future generations of workers? I don't see how that would be considered legal, but that would make sense. And at least it would say that there's only a few industries that the government has bailed out and gotten to agree to this, that this is possible. Because I'm sitting looking at this thinking, what's next? You know, if you think that will stop air commerce, what about if all over the road truck drivers want to strike? What would that do? That shuts everything down. Oh, yeah. That, That hits people at home. Most Day things, one. a lot of things <laughs> travel over rail at some point. Everything travels on friggin' semi. Yeah, everything. You know, when I used to drive a truck, I always asked, well, why do we still need rail? Because rails are so much cheaper, yep. but it takes longer. And then from the rails to the store, you have to have the trucks. Yes. So it is a thing. Raccoon wants to, de- I'm going to tell him, send us. Hey, Jerry, tell Raccoon where he can send us an email about what he'd like to come on the show and talk about. Newsworthy with Stephen Jerry at gmail.com. That's yeah. Send us an email, Raccoon, and uh, we'd love to have you in as a guest sometime, man. Uh, we just have sure. to get with you and talk about some stuff. That'd be awesome. Just figure out where we're going to be and what we're going to talk about that day and have a plan. 
uh, that'd be awesome. Uh, so is that your topic? You yeah, took one of my topics. I did, sorry. Yeah. No, no, that's okay. What aspect were you going to approach it from? I, I, I was very much on the fence because of the times that we already took control of the railroads and of the time the railroads uh, um, begged us, begged us, and by us, I mean the government, begged the government to take control to help financially. Um, but the one thing that I, and I was on the fence about that, but the one thing that, that was the one thing that I actually agreed with the progressives about. If, if you, you, Union Pacific isn't giving their employees seven paid days off, that's wrong. <laughs> yes. I mean, McDonald's why, will do that. Yeah. Probably, I'm guessing. Yeah. In, uh, Most companies will. So, yeah, I was very much uh, in uh, uh, agreement with Bernie Sanders. <laughs> he literally said that out loud. The, you know, the conservatives were the one that are all behind this, and they were all supporting Joe Biden and saying, yes, we need to do this. By the way, it passed 290 voting yes, 137 opposed in the House. Uh, it was a hugely bipartisan vote, and yes, it was hugely the, the dissenters were progressives. Yep. So let's go a little local here for a second. Sure. I got two stories involving Rhythm local on. sports. So I'm going to run through local them real sports? quick. Uh, yeah, okay. local-ish. Okay. So after the worst offensive output in the in the Mark Stoops era, uh, we fired last week our offensive coordinator and our running backs coach. Yay. See you later. Bye. Uh, I really felt like this season was a huge disappointment, uh, disappointment. disappointment, and I feel like that Mark Stoops did too because of the crew he had on the field and uh, with with the leadership we had with with Le Will Levis. And so very happy about that. But I also the next one is uh, I often give Coach Cal a lot of crap. You do, um, but in this case, I got to give Coach Cal, if you're listening, Coach, some props. Okay. After the game with Bellerman, who my son went to, uh, Nick went to, went to Bellerman, yep. and was actually practiced with most of these guys in the basketball team. So um, uh, Coach Cow after that game, said, hey, look, talking to the NCAA, this four-year deal where they can't be in the, in the dance, you're losing out because this team is ready. It gave UK everything that UK wanted. Um, and they were huge underdogs, and they came to play. Uh, one of the quotes UK or Coach Cal said that just cracked me up about Bellerman. He's like, I don't even know if they know how to dribble the ball. All they do is pass. The oh, yeah. Oh. All they do is pass, 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 pass. And after the game, he said, you know, these guys are ready for the dance. They won their division last year, couldn't go to the dance, and that was a bit of an auto win. Now, why – why the four years? The NCAA they has a rule that when, that they first join, when you they move up. when you move up yes. from Division two to Division one, you have to wait four years to get into the Um But they came in and they won their division in Division one. Now their division is a little small. I think that's a stupid rule. It's a dumb rule. The, the idea is probably they're not going to be ready. Well, guess what? If they're not going to be ready, they won't be able to qualify to go anyway. Right. Absolutely. So if they are good enough to qualify, let them go. So that was my thought. I just wanted to give Coach Cal some credit and Coach Stoop some credit for getting rid of the slackers who was his offensive. Speaking of coaches. giving credit. And oh, you're going to sports, finally give me credit? I'm going to give credit to a guy who's very worthy. I think you will agree. Oh, me. Definitely. Uh, in China. Oh. <laughs> they have a 50-year-old marathon runner who chain smokes. Now, just to be clear, this guy doesn't chain smokes, chain smoke on days that he's not training. He probably does then too, but not only that. He doesn't just chain smoke when he's at work, when he's walking around town. This guy chain smokes while running the freaking marathon. Wow. 50 year old. His nickname is Uncle Chin. Once again, this sounds so crazy. I'm going to have to give a link to prove it. <laughs> I've seen the story. He uh, recently ran a race. He finished in 574th place. Doesn't sound that great. He did 
beat over 1,000 other people while chain smoking while running <laughs> the 26 I wonder, I wonder if he lit the first one before the race and then just used the cigarette to keep, well, they say keep chain him smoking. Lit. It's, you know. <laughs> I'm sure not the entire oh. the, there, There's a picture of him running, and he's, yep, chain, the cigarette dangling. Have from you ever met a, cha- a true chain smoker? Have you ever been around one? A little bit. Okay. I have, grandmother. My great aunt Sadie, I loved her. She was a matter of fact type of person. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, had the voice of a chain. When I, when I met her, when I got to, to of age to remember Aunt Sadie, she was already in like her 60s, at least looked her 60s. Yeah. And had that deep, she could have competed with Barry White for for singing contracts. Yep. So, my aunt Sadie had came down for the holidays to my house one time, and this is a true story. Good. Aunt Sadie had a cigarette lit in the ashtray. Back then, we had ashtrays just sitting around the house, right? Because that's the way it was. Yep. Today's world, what you had a you smoked in the house. I got two, babies and all. I got two stories about Aunt Sadie. So the first one is she was sitting in the chair and she had a cigarette lit in the ashtray. Okay. She had a cigarette up here. She her and my other aunt always did these uh, uh search of words. Yep. So she had a word cigarette search. in her fingers. Yeah, word searches. In her fingers. Probably she had one dangling from her mouth. One dangling from her lip. I kid you not. Was doing her word search. Put the word search down. Picked up another cigarette and lit it. And I'm like, what? And she got to smelling something. And she's like, what is that smell? The one she had in her hand was catching her freaking hair on fire. (laughs) Four cigarettes at a time. Not quite that bad, but not a great aunt. This happened to me. In Fredericksburg, I smoked until... Well, actually, I was still smoking when I moved back here, but smoking at the time, we had finished unloading a truck. We're taking a break, uh, the entire freight crew and myself. I was trying to quit smoking, so I had a patch on, the nicotine patch. I had a chain. I had a cigarette dangling from my mouth, and I was telling some story and started to light another one, and one of my guys said, uh, Jerry, aren't you trying to quit or don't you have a patch on? I'm like, yeah, why? Dude, you got a patch on, you got a cigarette dangling from your mouth and you're lighting another one. They, I'll never forget. They said, you got to give something up. So I did. I give up the patch. <laughs> Listen, we went to my great aunt Sadie's house okay. one Thanksgiving. She lived in Erlanger in this little trailer. Um, and something happened. I think the jelly like plopped when we opened it. Whatever happened, I can't remember exactly, but it went all the way and touched the ceiling. So my mom had to get up and reach and rub the ceiling, okay? My entire life, I thought the ceiling of this house was brown. Oh, my goodness. And when she wiped that, it turned white. No. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. So then she had this big white patch on her ceiling. She paid my mom to do clean her whole ceiling because that's how much she smoked. Probably the balls. As well. Oh, she didn't do the walls. <laughs> she didn't dare touch the walls. She, in fact, told me, if you touch the walls, I'm beating your butt. <laughs> yeah. And like I said, the sad part is, back then, people smoked in houses. People smoked in cars, cars with windows rolled up yeah. in the wintertime. Didn't matter if you had kids, babies. It just su- such stupidity. Yeah. It really was. Put myself at the top of that list. I'm not talking about other people. I certainly oh, did more than my share of it. As gosh, well. how much? How much money did, or much time, or many cigarettes did we say we we'd smoked over our lifetime? Yeah, no, we figured it was, up. It was so so like if you smoke a pack amount. a day, yeah. just multiple, do the math. It takes X amount of minutes to smoke it. So yeah. how much? What portion of your life? What? How many days, weeks, months? It was some spent? stupid yeah, number crazy. we came up with between us. Okay, yeah. So guess what happened in Northern Michigan? I'm bringing all the topics in today. What? what I think what? I might have heard what happened in northern Michigan. Oh, what would you hear? I can't remember something, but I don't recall what. But it probably wasn't this. Maybe not. A guy who owns a cabin in northern Michigan woods okay. caught a picture of Bigfoot. I did read about this. Did you? Yes, did. Look at you. You're going. I actually did. I'm sucking you down those rabbit holes, aren't nope. I? 
<laughs> not that one, you're not. Gonna need a little more proof first. <laughs> well, here's a couple of questions I have. I'm, I'm really skeptical about this, to be honest, because he said in his interview that this activity had been happening for weeks. Okay. Why did he not, at some point, put up a bunch of trail cams? He didn't. One would think. You would think. I mean, that's kind of, you know, trail cams are expensive, but if you provide proof that Bigfoot exists, you're going to be loaded. Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> so, if you're Especially, that guy. You know, one grainy footage. Eh, put up several. Like you said, you, you get the guy on two different ones. Simultaneously, yeah. you pretty You've much got have proof. convertible proof right. then at that point. Yes, and, he didn't do it. So he didn't, but he said that, and then the picture itself was of Bigfoot's head sticking up behind a turned over tree, which could have easily been made, anything. Been anything. Yes. So uh, just another case of uh, why? Could have, should have, would have been. Could have, should have, would have. Yep. I, I mean, I go back to my story. I know what I saw. I didn't have a camera. I didn't own a camera. Yep. Or I would have done everything in my power to have gotten that picture. But anyhow. All right, Jerry. Time for one more for me? Yeah, we got time for one more, man. I got two. I got one, two. So. I got a few more. No, we're, yeah, we're pushing time. <laughs> Did you hear about K KFC screw up in Germany this past week? No. KFC apologized for using crystal knot which is a German word. I seriously doubt unless you're a native German, German speaker, you know what it means. It, crystal knot is referring to the attacks on Jews that basically at this point signifies the beginning of the Holocaust. It's referred to the night of the broken glass or considered the start of the Holocaust. Well, this past week, KFC suggested that people celebrate the anniversary of that date by buying cheesy chicken. <laughs> what? Yes. How, about how, an, how, what? how do you become that insensitive? About an hour after the alert, they further compounded the problem by issuing a follow-up that blamed the tasteless promotion on an error in our system. Yeah, errors in our system normally do this kind of thing. <laughs> and they added, we're very sorry. We will check our internal processes immediately so that this does not happen again. Please excuse the error. Are they still showing, are they still selling the cheesy chicken? Because yes. I don't know that we want to eat it. I don't know I want to eat cheesy chicken to begin with. Right. But my question is this. I wonder if they're actually going to release the name of the guy that gets fired. I hope so. They need to. Yeah, that's This terrible. is stupidity to a new level. Wow. Who? How much... Marijuana, does it take to get to the point? You think that's a good idea yeah, for no. a marketing campaign? And we, we, we're kind of joking around, but it's never going to be too soon. No. <laughs> it's just, that's part of the absurdity. How right. stupid can you be? Yeah. How drunk, how high can you be to think, you know what? This makes sense. All right. So, do well, we want to go serious or do I just want to not go serious? Uh, we're ending, so this will probably be the last one. Let's go a little go serious. For it. And, and I have to ask. Sure. It was reported this week that Russian President Vladimir Putin sent Zelensky a letter or a call, some communication, stating, we're willing to talk peace. I didn't heard this. Yes. However, there's only one exception. You and Ukraine joining NATO cannot ever happen. And Zelensky said, eh, screw you. <laughs> really? Yeah. I'm surprised. He should have agreed. Because, first of all... I don't disagree with you. When Russia was broken up, I, I'm, I'm going to say something I didn't think I would have said a few weeks ago. When the Soviet Union broke up, many agreements were made yes. by NATO to the Soviet Union. To Mikhail we Gorbachev. Gorbachev. This, 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 and this. And we Ukraine, broke every one of them. Ukraine and the Baltics will never join NATO as one of those. That was one of the very top. Yes, Another because the that very top was that NATO Russia. would not move one inch closer. Absolutely. We have moved hundreds and hundreds of miles, yeah. if not thousands. Countries. We have broken so many of those promises. So, 
did don't get me wrong i'm not saying that russia had a right to do what they did in ukraine it's horrible horrible atrocities have been committed since they once they were there once again we have broken a shitload of rules it reminds me a lot of when you begin to look in history of the treaties that we made with the indians that was good until we decided we didn't we like want them anymore. We'd tear it up and say yeah. well you know what screw that one we're going to renegotiate it's kind of what we've done with russia uh, we, we've broken so many of the promises that we made concerning Ukraine, concerning NATO moving east. Uh, I'm not surprised that Russia has some concerns. I don't think they went about it the right way at all. I don't but, either. Uh, but yeah. so, first of all, we agreed a long time ago, and we have told Zelensky, when I say we, not just the United States, most European countries have told Zelensky, Ukraine has very, very little, if any, chance of joining NATO in the foreseeable future. Yeah. He knew that. He may have think. He may think that this changed the world's opinion to the point they now have a chance. I don't think but so. But if they were offering to, to begin negotiating the end of the war, and that's all he needed to agree to, when NATO itself has been saying for many years is not going to happen, he should have agreed to it. Yeah, I agree. In my humble opinion. How many people, how many lives are going to be cost just yes. because him being stubborn at this point? And being stubborn partially because of us, partially because of NATO. We're feeding him all the stuff he needs at this point. Yep. Um, and, you know, we could talk for, and maybe we will at some point talk about that whole war. But uh, I agree with you 100%. If Zelensky had an opportunity to end all of it uh, and not lose any of his country, I mean, he's yeah. not getting Crimea back. That's not happening. Um, I think he believes that he might. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's part of the problem. Uh, Russia bad. very much believes that Crimea is Russian. And if they continue to push into Crimea, bad things are going to happen. I agree. Now, rightfully, should it belong to Ukraine? Yeah, probably. It did for I don't know how long. Yeah, you know, way before I was born. So I'm not disputing that. I'm just saying somewhere along the line, you have to change and become a realist. What's possible? Yeah. Well, guys, I apologize for the little mid-show mishap. Uh, hopefully, we'll I'll learn and be better. We got some exciting things coming. That obviously, once we get through the holidays, January is going to be an exciting thing. Yes, it is. Had a great meeting today with a uh, potential investor. <laughs> a potential investor, and uh, uh, that's going to happen, I think. And uh, so we're <laughs> we are absolutely stoked for that. And uh, we hope you like the new format. This is going to be our format for most of the shows now coming up. Um, uh, Anyway, thank we you. decided it wasn't fair to the rest of the world to limit ourselves to only two topics. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Perfect. Very, very, very perfect. Yeah, totally joking, guys. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> I, can see, I, can, I can see his face. You can't. I can see his face. He ain't joking. Uh, anyway, uh, guys, if you can't see the light, be the light. Thanks for joining us tonight. Have a great night.